Hello, this is the last video of the series. We will discuss the possibilities of the deployment of your project, how to prepare it and also the workflow with other teammates on the same project. There are some ways to present your project. The simplest one is creating a Ventus presentation and playing it back on one or more machines. Another possibility is to play the project in the so-called director mode, which will only load the project without starting a scene directly. You then need a remote control application that tells Ventus which scenes to load. Let us start taking a look at the Ventus presentation workflow. You should just open the scene that you want to be the shown scene in the presentation. Now you can export it with the scene menu in the menu bar. Go to export and select Ventus presentation. Give your presentation a name and save it anywhere on your machine. Ventus will now ask you to choose which assets to take with the presentation. By default all files that are referenced in any of your file loader nodes will be ticked. You can untick all assets that you don't need. If you need more assets than you reference in your file loaders you should use the resource linker node in your scene. This node has a list of all needed assets that should be added to an export. You can change the wanted assets when placing the node in the content editor or with the link resources button on the bottom of its properties. With a boolean in the input you can activate or deactivate this node. A presentation file cannot be opened by anything else than the Ventus runtime for playback. This means that no one is able to read out the assets or the scenes inside the presentation and steal or modify them. If you only deploy the presentation to a customer, he will not be able to use it for anything else than just playing it in a runtime. To start a presentation, you need to install the Ventus suit on the production machine as well. Once done, just double click on the presentation file and the Ventus runtime will start up and handle the rest. Although you are able to control the scene through the different interaction nodes, it might sometimes be more comfortable to have full control over a full project and be able to load and unload scenes or adjust certain properties with a second application. This can be done by starting the project instead of a presentation with a runtime. Right click on your presentation file and choose start to do this. Now you could access the running project with any remote control application, for example the Ventus Director. How to exactly write such a remote application or how to work with the Director will not be handled here because this is a too big subject for this tutorial series. Before deploying your project you might want to see how it does performance wise. To do so you can turn on the scene statistics in your renderer window. This shows the performance consumption on your CPU and the GPU. On the top you can see the duration of the rendering process on your CPU and GPU compared to the time you have in one frame. This is expressed as bars and a percentage. The bars also show which part exactly takes up so much time. Examples are the scene validation, the designer's GUI or the multi-sampling of your scene. Below that you see the current cluster clock which is incremented by one each frame. Behind that you see how long the runtime is running already. Here are the frame rate and the duration it takes to render one frame. There you can see the CPU load that Ventus has on the total performance of the machine's CPU. CPU and GPU memory show the impact on the respective RAM. Below that you see some GPU statistics like the number of vertices, draw calls, uploads to the graphics cards, creation calls and a resource counter. This should be enough for examining most of the problems that appear in your scene regarding the performance. You can turn on and off several options to show more or less information in the renderer window. More information can be found in the movie and layer processing and AV inputs and outputs. The behavior can be changed with the last few options. You can turn off accumulated bars to show the exact timings of each process in the performance statistics. Show more than one frame, change the number of frames that should be used as a reference for the bars and scale the statistics to the preview, which is useful when rendering a video wall project on your small renderer window in the design machine, which would otherwise result in a very small font. Lastly, you can stall the GPU, which prevents the graphics card from showing wrong results, which is happening often when the performance is quite good but the GPU just idles during the measurement. 
So often you can correct the results of the GPU bar this way, when it seems to be a lot higher than the scene structure would normally suggest. So much for the performance. Let us jump to the other exporting options, which enable you to work with other designer operators or just jump between different workstations. First you are able to export your currently open scene to a Vento scene archive. The export procedure is very similar to that one for a presentation. The difference is that the VZA can be opened in Aventus Designer to extract all the contained assets and the scene can then be modified further in Aventus Designer. So this file can simply be moved onto another machine or project and extracted there to continue the working process. You can do the same with the whole project instead of only one scene. Close all the scenes and click on your project's name on the top right of the designer window and open the project maintenance here. Here you can see a whole list of all the assets contained in your project structure. Ventus will again take all files that are referenced by any loader node in your project. You can add more files or remove them by ticking or unticking them. When done you can click the clean button on the bottom of this window to delete all unticked files. These will be moved to the paper bin of your machine and can be restored from there. When clicking on the archive button, Ventus will ask you where to save the project archive. This will contain all the ticked assets. Like scene archive, the project archive can be transferred to any other machine and extracted over there to continue working. When opening it in the designer, you will be asked where to extract the project before the designer opens it. When changing the file name extension from VPA to VPT, you can create a Ventus project template. You can right click on it and choose to install it on your machine. Now when you open the project browser in Ventus Designer, you can see your project template there. Double click it to create a new project based on that template. If you do not want to install the template first, you can also double click it in the explorer to open the Ventus Designer project wizard. Lastly, you might want to know about how to showcase the current state of your project for your customer easily. There are several ways to do this. Either you can create a presentation of the current state and play it back in front of your customer. But often you cannot meet your customer in person every time and probably they do not have a runtime license to play back the presentation on their own. Then you can send them pictures or movies of the current state. Creating a screenshot of what's currently rendered is as easy as clicking this button up here. When doing so, you can save the current frame as a picture to your hard disk. If you want to just copy it over to the clipboard, you can use the button next to it and paste it anywhere you like. If a picture is not enough for the showcase, you can render a sequence of your scene to your hard disk. Use the last button up here to open the render to disk dialog. You can render in two different ways, the easier one being time-based. Here you can change the duration of the capture and start it using that button. When using interactive mode, you can first capture all interactions that should be made during the rendering. This will then be repeated for the rendering process. When changing to the output tab, you can define how the capture should be encoded and where it should be saved. You can use a picture sequence or one of two available codecs, QuickTime and Huff YOV. You can also change things like the FPS or size. When done, you can send your customer the rendered movies or screenshots to give him an idea of where the project is going or you can use the rendered images and clips for yourself and your Ventus projects. This is it about this tutorial and closes the whole video tutorial series. We hope you got a good insight into how Ventus works and are curious to learn more and finally use it in your projects. If you need more information regarding Ventus in general or would like to watch more tutorials, visit our website ventus.com. You can now start to use the designer and learn more about all the nodes and the possibilities that they bring with them with our help system, consisting of the user manual where there are also some how-tos that could get you started the help scenes that can be accessed by hitting F1 when hovering over a node, and our forum with a very active and helpful community. Also, you can of course book a whole Ventus training course to get a more detailed or specialized look into our software. 
We hope you enjoyed this introduction and look forward to hearing about your astonishing projects you realize with our software.